Minutes of the Meek, where we watch made-for-TV movies and miniseries so you don't have to. From Gia to Xenon, Hysteria to Sybil, welcome to Movies of the Meek. Uh, I guess the simplest plot would be uh, there's a, a cat, a, a talking cat and a talking dog, <laughs> uh, who are also a, a detective duo. Uh, and they are investigating a murder in yeah. a small Virginia town. So it's it's called Murder She Heard, which is obviously a play off of Murder She Wrote. Now the reason that they did that, so this is based off of the series of books, the Mrs. Murphy Mystery Series, mm-hmm. which are written by Rita Mae Brown. Which, if you watch any interviews with Rita Mae Brown, she is a very uh, handsome looking woman. <laughs> to say the least she also clearly does not get along with people and so in every interview they're like do you find it more difficult to write the voices of humans or to write the voices of animals and she's like well I find it a little bit more difficult to do the voices of people cause I spent so much time with my animals you know I was sleeping with my dogs and cats even when I was younger and I still do and and so it's it's one of those things where like she she wrote this fucking book series and it's all about this 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 cat that solves mysteries in this small town and i think when they finally decided to adapt this to the small screen uh that's when they they realized hey this is basically the exact same plot as murder she wrote like it's the exact same concept. It's a small town, and it's this this woman that's going around and solving mysteries in this small town that has no business actually solving <laughs> mysteries in this small town. She shouldn't be doing it. She shouldn't at all, okay? And and that's one of the things with this movie that I just kept going back to is I was, I was just like is this the first time she's done this? Obviously in this movie, this is the first time yep. that she's done this, but the, the fucking cat acts like they've solved a billion fucking yeah, mysteries. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, this is clearly the first time it's happened. Cause the cops are like, Hey, you're, you're, uh, <laughs> let's say, let's go through the thing she does. <laughs> she, uh, obstruction of justice she basically (laughs) prevents the police from knowing all the information that they need to know she withholds evidence she has a fucking bullet casing and she never gives it over to the cops and she also at one point steals steals evidence okay so you have all that going on if if we already if we weren't in the pre-established world where she'd been solving mysteries then she would just be arrested (laughs) (laughs) But she doesn't get arrested because it's part of this series of 26 fucking books. Really? Okay. Wait, is this movie based off the very first book? No. Which one is this? What number in the series? Like, number four. Sorry, that's not even accurate. Um, it's it's not based off of any of them. It's a new story. The title is just similar to the fourth book. (laughs) Because the it's, the fourth or f- fifth well, book is called on, like on. the fourth or fifth book is called like murder she pawed or something like that. So so they made they wrote a new story and for they, television and, and they had like twenty books to use for, yeah for ideas for wow. I mean, around this time they probably only had like ten. <laughs> so but they, it, the, is but this they, like the Game of Thrones of? Uh, of, of like of cat of, fiction. of pet of pet detective books sure <laughs> you know and and when i was first watching it you know i was watching it with an open mind and i i, I, I originally you know was enjoying the fact that they had a little meta commentary while ricky lake is in bed this movie stars ricky lake by the way yeah and there's this little meta commentary where <clears throat> ricky lake is reading one of these kinds of novels she's reading like the equivalent of a dick francis novel you know in bed mm-hmm. and mrs murphy is like i abhor those kinds of novels they're always so predictable <laughs> and it's like fuck you you fucking i fucking cat. okay i hate the fucking pets in this movie <laughs> i hate 
every voiced pet in this movie. What about um livestock or um when there are wild animals? Did you like the fox that I, sounded like I Larry did, the Cable Guy? I did not like the fox. <laughs> I did appreciate the German German shepherds. They were super racist. How did you like that? I liked how they were German. They, oh, I they thought it was quoted, clever. They quoted Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he's Austrian. He's not German. I'll be back, shorty. It was like super lazy, but that's super lazy. But I thought it was like funny. The other thing that happens in this movie that's super racist. So let's go through the plot a little bit. So, um, Ricky Lake has a new neighbor moving in, and uh, yeah. Mrs. Murphy sees basically a person being threatened for their life mm-hmm. and mrs murphy thinks that it's the new neighbor that is doing this ricky lake then meets the neighbor mm-hmm. everyone thinks the neighbor's a suspect ricky lake thinks that it's him uh mm-hmm. then you know she's like what is this guy's deal he was threatening this guy i think it was him that was there last night threatening that guy um and then <laughs> and then that guy does actually get murdered. They find his body in a car, which is my favorite scene ever. I was just showing you. Um, <laughs> There's a sequence where, where it doesn't sound like English. <laughs> it sounds like random words combined in a southern draw that the woman never uses the entire rest of the movie. One, ma'am. You hooked the BMW. Or before that, it's just that one four-second clip. Um, but during that entire sequence, you know, all, spoilers for this shitty movie. Um, that entire sequence, I knew the entire time he wasn't the killer. Sam. Okay. And so what I was getting to is that when when they're basically gathering up all this evidence against this new neighbor and they're they're like this guy did it this guy killed the guy he says he says do you still do lynchings in this town? And they say, not since July. And that is the first and only time that there is a black character in the movie. During that sequence, there's a black guy in the background. Well, and that's literally the only time well, that there's the only time that there's a black guy in the movie a black is guy. when they're okay. talking I'll just about say, lynchings. You're right, that's the only time. Yeah, that's the only <laughs> time. And I was like, <laughs> they bring that up a couple times, don't they? Like the racist, the racist past of the town. Oh yeah, because uh, what's the neighbor's name? Do you know? I don't remember his name. No, or his face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, this movie is uh, very poor quality on YouTube, and I and it appeared like when i was watching the movie it was as if like i had taken my glasses off <laughs> like <laughs> i couldn't see anybody until they got very close to the camera but uh um i think they have like a little conversation with harry and and her neighbor at the beginning of the movie cuz he's taking down the fox den like yes. sign okay he d- he decides that he's going to change the name of the fox den and she goes 200 years of tradition you're just gonna throw that out the window and then the next day he was like by the way slavery is tradition too <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i think that's what you're thinking but of. he keeps the name though at the end um yeah and, and so ricky lake starts thinking that he's a serial killer because when she is at his house <laughs> and I loved this when she's at his house she's kind of moseying around being all super sneaky and Ricky Lake yeah, ends up finding sneaky. finding this box of books and all the books are about serial killers <laughs> and Mrs. Murphy says <laughs> um <laughs> those are how to gods for serial killers <laughs> she has the accent of a wonderful southern belle by the way Ugh. um and, and so my favorite part of about that is that Ricky Lake is the one that says, oh, you're a criminal psychologist, and he never says yes. <laughs> He's very vague about his his profession as a doctor. 
<laughs> but that turns out to be what it is. Yeah, I mean, but that's like, I just love the fact that he's just like, why do you have these books? What are you, a criminal psychologist? And he's like, well, you know, I, I, I gave up my practice. And she's just like, so you, you also like crimes too. I'm a huge fan of these terrible detective novels that we're living in. Um, you know, we're, we're obviously the same. Like, we should make out. And then just as the movie continues, she just keeps talking to him about being a criminal psychologist. And it's like, he never said yes. Yeah, he never said yeah. he's a criminal psychologist, <laughs> but you're just saying that he assuming. is. And she is the he worst, is? worst detective. She's <laughs> terrible. And that was, I looked up, I, I, just because I was so baffled by this whole thing, I was like, this series of books, is this really this woman, Harry and this cat, and dogs solving these mysteries? And the answer is yes. Th th and that's why I was so baffled this entire time. I was like, why not just establish that they've done this a whole bunch of times yeah. and have the police be slightly more supportive instead of just Ricky Lake being <laughs> a super manipulative bitch the entire time? Yeah, I don't know. This entire movie also is 80 yard. Like, oh my god! There's, there's. I mean, the entire movie is clearly Mrs. Murphy's inner monologue is eighty yard because you have to. You're not going to do that live. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Same with Tucker, the adorable corgi. Uh. Okay, his voice not the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he no. was an adorable corgi, and a lot of the other dialogue was eighty yard too. Just, just a whole bunch of this movie was eighty yard, and it just was terrible oh it was absolutely terrible yeah the uh i really liked when they had a lot of animals on the screen and they would just you had no idea what animal was saying what <laughs> like when those those uh those hunting dogs at the end were ran in and saved the day like yeah. they were just shouting things <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of like Children of the Corn, where uh, all the kids are running by the screen, and the one kid just yells "apple pie" because it's like you can't control them; they're a bunch of fucking kids. Like I know you're trying to have a bunch of tension and stuff like that, but you have a group of kids. Of course, they're gonna say random stuff. Apple but yeah, so <laughs> so these pets can talk to each other. Yeah. Their mouths don't move. Yeah. So it's some kind of... <laughs> telekinesis. Tele well, telepathy. Tele oh, yeah. Telekinesis is but moving it'd be things pretty with cool. your mind. It, that'd be cool if they could do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, they can, so all the animals in the movie can talk to each other through telepathy. Yeah. And, but then at the end, the, there's like a second twist after you find out who's the real murderer. Yeah. That the animals can talk to humans. Because she says, because they're walking out of the store, and they're, and uh, and I think Miss Murphy says something, and then and then Ricky Lake goes, "Did you say something?" There's there's a few times where Ricky Lake thinks that she hears the animals saying something, and that's also there's so many times in this movie where Ricky Lake is just super creepy for having these pets with her all the time. The pets <laughs> follow her around everywhere, everywhere. and I, I think a dog is like. That makes sense, but to have your cat follow yeah. you, and she brings the pets to like everything, like every party in the movie, like to the fucking to the the funeral, yeah, and then to that fancy party. Like, why would you bring your <laughs> cat to like a fancy party? The 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 fancy party. She didn't intentionally bring those pets but there. They're always they around. followed her. But that's because <sighs> Ricky Lake is always real close to solving a mystery. <laughs> If she wasn't always close to solving mysteries, those pets wouldn't have a need to follow her. Uh, I fucking hated Ricky Lake. Yeah, she was terrible. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of info about this movie, like on IMDb or even Wikipedia. There's like a sentence for the plot. It didn't have trivia or goofs. Yeah. So, and we just established that segment, and yeah. now we like can't even do it. I mean, yeah. we, we're gonna try our best. I, I mean, don't... that's the way I. I felt watching this movie that my job was to be the trivia and goofs <laughs> of this movie. We gotta, we gotta and uh, fill that out. Everything that I've been pointing out about this movie has been faults with this <laughs> piece of shit movie. <laughs> Was there anything that you liked about this? Movie? So, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Murphy at the beginning of the movie says, "I may have nine lives." 
but she only has one. But I thought she said at one point she has eight lives. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a goof right there, you piece of shit film. Also, uh, she, I don't know who she's talking to. I think Miss Murphy says something to either one of the animals in the movie or talking about one of the characters. Uh, but she says, oh, I don't think they know cat speak. And I was like, well, that's a goof right there because they're not speaking. This is com- this is complete telepathy. And I was, <laughs> yeah. I think the writers just didn't care. Yeah. I don't think anyone cared when they were making this movie. The woman who wrote the Mrs. Murphy books wrote this movie, though. Really? Yeah. I looked at a picture, and she is very handsome. <laughs> She's a handsome she, woman. She looks very. She looks. Um, I don't know. Like, she has not aged well. I'm trying to think, you know, of a thing I liked. It's it's not a real mystery. You know, there's 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 not a bunch of clues that you personally can pick up on and be like, I think it's this person. I think it's this person. It's it's all... The whole, it's just the a... whole movie is you being directed towards that guy, Blair, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, the whole movie there and then at the end it's not him and that's the point of it and i knew that five minutes in did you know it was the guy it ended up being no but i knew but that i knew that they gonna, weren't it, gonna it was give gonna me enough some... clues to, for me to figure that out i figure i mean it had to either be him or like her ex right because there was yeah. not that many other people that they established or like the police officer the, yeah the sheriff right it yeah. had to be one of those people so <sighs> And that's the thing is that it, it's 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 kind of like <laughs> if you if you remember the movie Scream Two, <laughs> Scream Scream Two is the perfect uh, perfect who done it because they established two characters in the beginning of the movie and then they never show them the entire rest of the movie and then at the end it's like twist it was these guys all along and you're like oh I forgot they were in this movie because they were in the opening scene and then they were never in the rest of the movie and that's the way i felt about this movie like that guy but he was the guy who ended up being the murderer he was he was in the movie a lot like he was one of he he was like her yeah, friend like he was fairly at, prominent you yeah, know every other scene he was in but i had no idea it was him he was too nice he was a cool dude yeah and it was all because he murdered someone when he was younger. So, yeah, can we talk like, about that a little bit? So he <clears throat> he got in a car accident or with his friend. Yeah, they were very close. Yeah, his friend was very rich. Yeah, so and his friend died in the crash, and he stole his identity. Yeah, and then I think Ricky Lick was like, "People always said we, we looked like <laughs> brothers." I was like, "No, like what? <laughs> How would that even work?" Because his face was mangled. And they did had to do face reconstruction surgery. But what I'm saying is the, that they wouldn't look like brothers if his face was mangled. <laughs> that they would clearly pull up the two different IDs and they'd be like, "This so, guy matches with this dead body. This mangled face boy matches with this ID that this, we can't find." <laughs> so this movie takes place in the late '90s, right? Yeah. So this accident, in Virginia. this accident would have happened in what? In in the 80s early 80s maybe because it was in his youth this guy's youth yeah they like they would have they would have known that wasn't the person who died wasn't him yeah the families would have known yeah i don't understand there's no way that this makes sense like this is a (laughs) we don't know how much they looked alike the fact that they knew each (laughs) other makes it almost impossible to believe that he got away with it yeah if he stole a random person's identity that'd be that would make more sense than this yeah that's like if, if i stole your identity we got in a car accident i stole your identity your dad your sister they'd just be like oh hi max people do say we look like brothers yeah <laughs> so <laughs> they don't no one says that but the whole movie i was like How, what does he do for a living he's rich yeah and i found out yeah. so i got that much but uh I don't know, man. This movie was rough. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I like the um, Tucker's like, um, his arc, his arc with <laughs> him being too short. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I didn't like it. It was boring, but like, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad. I like that they they included it because Miss Murphy didn't have anything similar. And no, it was good to see him grow as a character. Yeah, and even yeah. though at the end of the movie he kind of fucks it up, he misses, and then he, and then he does he grab the gun? He, no, no, he doesn't because he he does. He he fails the first time, and then the second he, time he goes, "You can do it." And then he, he jumps. bites the hand, but yeah. the, the dogs behind him are the ones that really take down the dude. Well, yeah, but he 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 knocks the hand out of the way so that the bullet shot goes into a wall as opposed to inside of people. But I feel like <laughs> the act of him biting the guy's hand is what set the gun off to begin with. Like he could have easily killed Ricky Lake in that. Sure, I don't know. I'm on Tucker's side. I think he did a good job. He's um, Mrs. Murphy doesn't have an arc. She's just killing it the whole time. Ricky Lake's arc she, is that a... she goes from a frumpy, disgusting woman to a frumpy, <laughs> disgusting woman with a boyfriend who she kisses one time. She is, she is pretty frumpy. She, her fucking outfits are like the fucking worst. <laughs> fucking disgusting mom-looking fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this movie made me so mad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the level of disdain I have while I'm talking about this, but I, I feel literally... like Ricky Lake was modeled after the author because the author kind of has a similar style, <laughs> like short hair and like really like unflattering clothes. If you look up, if you look up these books. Wait, is there is this a man though? They're co-written. <laughs> the books are co-written by the author's cat. Oh. Okay. okay. And, and and so fucking like all of these books um are co-written by the the author's cat and the author's cat's name. Hold on, I can find it because it's so depressing this entire thing. Um she looks like she could bench press a lot. Sneaky Pie Brown is the co-author. And so Mrs. Murphy is based off of Sneaky Pie Brown. And the author says that over time, she says, you know, the thing is, is that Sneaky Pie Brown may be getting older and may be getting fatter. But in the description, she likes for Mrs. Murphy to be described as even thinner and more agile than she ever has been. It's just like, what you the s- fuck dude, is wrong with you? You sound just like Miss Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> if I close my eyes, it's like I'm, I'm like listening to the movie again. <laughs> Because you couldn't watch the movie because it was in 240p. It was so <laughs> grainy. It's so blurry. It looked real good on my phone. It did. <sighs> yeah. I don't know, man. Um, it's so it's so baffling how many people were like, I love this movie. I loved this movie since I was a kid. Yeah, I found some reviews. You want me to read a couple? Sure. Okay. This one's from Susie, written in 2001. <laughs> Uh, holy shit! Um, the animals were the animals really steal this story, and they are pretty amazing. The corgi has many scenes and does them with great style. <laughs> Ricky Lake is good too. The supporting cast, not the animals, are good as well. The redoubtable Ed Begley Jr. does a fine job. This is a great film for kids, but adults may find their attention lagging. I would agree with that. Yep. <laughs> a lot of people like Tucker. The yeah. corgi. Yeah, I thought he was cute. He was I, cute. I like the fox that it's talks personal. like Larry the Cable Guy the best. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he started talking, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us any of them? Down, 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 there. <laughs> I was like, no, that's a good fox. Whoa, hold on a second. One could say this film was for the birds. By helpless dancer, it was. This was from 2001. This picture left me longing for a nice hot bowl of special kitty. Not a bad little movie, but probably more geared for the young set. The animals were so cute and just so smart as they were solving a murder that even the police were having a problem with. The one big thing that kept this from being an Academy Award winner, <laughs> in my humble opinion, was sexy Tom Jones singing "What's New, Pussycat." 
I can just hear old Tom's robust platinum throated vocal cords warbling and moaning out those treasured lyrics. <laughs> What's new, Pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> What's new, Pussycat? <laughs> These people are fucking crazy. <laughs> what site are you on? <laughs> this is the IMDb reviews. <laughs> There's like I love there's, IMDb. There's like twenty of them, and they're all from like, two, <laughs> like early two thousands. Um, what's yeah. our next next week? Project. We will be doing the Houdini mini series. Are we? Will be our first mini series. It's three hours long, and it's starring Adrian Brody, an excellent actor. Are we doing an episode? We're doing both parts in one episode. Whoa! Yeah. All right. It's the way to do it. All right. I'm down. It's so good. I've seen an hour of it. <laughs> Is it, like, bad? It's so bad. Really? <laughs> oh, no. Uh-uh. It's so good. Is this going to be, like, a really bad prestige? Or it's kind of like a really bad prestige. I love it. <laughs> That's, uh. That should be the title of the episode. <laughs> it's, like, a really bad prestige. <laughs>